any scientific experiment, if it wants a knowledge, want to become a scientific knowledge, it have to go through something called a scientific method. And the goal of the scientific method is the goal of any experiment is to establish a cause and effect relationship between. between um, I'm going to make this. Uh, between a independent or oh, independent. Right away, right away, you can kind of see that yeah, the cost is the independent variable, and the effect is the dependent variable. Wait for it. Research question. Pretty much formulaic, really. How does? Wait for it. Same thing. Independent variable. Connecting work is a fact. And then you got your dependent variable in a whatever situation that is. The thing that I find a lot of students kind of struggling is on is what is the purpose of each of the section in the lab report? What what do they mean? What do they for? So a lot of students write like 10 page in lab report and then they got just a terrible grade because each of the section actually doesn't achieve the purpose of that section. So the purpose of the intro is pretty much just answer one question. Why should why should the independent variable matters to the dependent variable? The importance, the hypothesis. The point of the hypothesis is pretty much saying what is a possible answer to the research question. A possible answer. So you gotta connect the hypothesis to this research question. So an example is uh, if you increase the independent variables, you will see an increase in dependent variables. The reason I believe that is because so and so. So, hypothesis is a prediction. You predict it before you even do the experiment. You think that this is a possible answer to the research question. You can be wrong and nobody cares. It's okay to be wrong in the hypothesis because you haven't done the experiment yet. Okay? Then moving on to the method question. The method question is pretty much just have a method second step which is very good but then you don't explain how do you physically measure something and when you want something physically measured you need to say what equipment you use how many milliliter of something you use if you just say I, I use the same amount of something that's not good enough because how much is an amount uh, is it in grams is it in milliliter the result conclusion and evaluation Result is pretty much just whatever, what did you get? Alright, now conclusion is a thing that a lot of people get messed, about, messed up about. The point of the conclusion is to say, is my hypothesis correct based on your data? Is it correct? It can be wrong based on my result. So essentially you have to tie it in your conclusion with your hypothesis, sorry. So your result feed into the conclusion, feed into the conclusion. So in the conclusion you have to mention your result. Once you say, okay, if my hypothesis is correct, so then your conclusion will have to mention the hypothesis and say, yeah, my hypothesis is correct. If my hypothesis is correct, then yes, you already have answered your research question. Now, if my conclusion, my hypothesis is not supported, not correct by, not supported by the result, then you can go back to say, yeah, hypothesis is not according to the result. So maybe the research question should be answered differently. Evaluation and improvement. So evaluation is not about the wordings of your method. It's about can I trust my conclusion? Can I trust my conclusion? Sorry, I should say a hundred percent. Can I trust my conclusion one hundred percent? 
what are the errors in my, in my method that will cause me not to be able to trust this conclusion. Yeah, the method is pretty valid. I can trust the conclusion because in the evaluation, this is where your qualitative data, qualitative data is what you observe. So if you observe something in the result, you can mention it in the evaluation. I think I can trust this conclusion because according to my qualitative data, so and so, or according to my actual graph, so and so. So it looks like I can trust my conclusion, but a lot of time you can't trust your conclusion 100% of the time because there are some kind of error. Either it's a systematic error, some, some kind of error with your method, or if it's like, oops, I made some kind of mistake, or oops, I only do one trial, so I can't trust it 100% of the time. Evaluation. Then another thing also is the improvement. So your results should feed into the improvement. You can say, yeah, I can't trust my conclusion 100% of the time because of these errors. So in the future, if I were to, what difference? What would I do differently in terms of your, so then you can feed that back into the method. Oh, and then this is really advanced. I'm not sure if you guys, uh, will be able to do. What is the one thing that I didn't even look at when or think of when I set up the experiment? What other ways could I set up the experiment and go back to the research question and say, yeah, here's a different way I can do this experiment in order to answer my research question? So you can tie the whole thing together. And that would be like an advanced laboratory.